All right, I believe we're live. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to installment number two of our Shimano uh, tutorials. All right, we're going to get this next one going. The next one is Submarine Tutorial 1.3. So, submarine tutorial 1.3, start menu, start a new scenario, tutorials, submarine tutorial 1.3, um, belay what order, what are you talking about? WB Ball 15, Blay What Order? Um, no. There will be no Hunt for Red October references in this video slash stream. Alright, Basic Submarine Operations 3. Introduction to Diesel Submarines and Submarine Launched Missiles. Hmm. Duration, 6 hours. Game time, average 20 minutes play time with time compression. Location, Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. This is the third in a series of tutorials designed... <laughs> in a series of tutorials designed to teach the players the fundamentals of submarine operations in Simano. Command, Modern, Air, Navy, Operations. In this tutorial, the following topics will be discussed dust will be covered. Diesel electric propulsion, snorkeling, loading specific weapons to a mount, submarine launched anti-ship missiles, submarine launched cruise missiles, and submarines equipped with surface to air missiles. Load selected. Alright. Your mission is to destroy a merchant ship with missiles, conduct a land strike with cruise missiles, and destroy an aircraft with surface-to-air missiles. Well, that sounds fun. Alright. Alrighty. Before we get started, let's discuss the differences between our diesel electric submarine and the nuclear submarines we've used in the previous tutorials. First and foremost, diesel electric submarines rely on diesel engines when traveling on or near the surface. <sighs> Sorry. A portion of the power from these diesel engines is directed to charging an array of powerful batteries. When the submarine dives, these electric batteries offer extremely quiet operation. However, the duration of the dive and the speed at which the submarine can travel is limited by the power stored in the batteries. Nuclear submarines, on the other hand, are powered by one or more nuclear reactors, providing essentially infinite power. Nuclear submarines can stay submerged indefinitely. The only real constraint is food for the crew and can travel extremely fast compared to their diesel electric cousins. The trade-off is that a nuclear submarine produces significantly more noise, even when stationary, due to the pumps and cooling systems required to run their reactors. As this tutorial begins, hey, uh, how am I sounding? Do I sound crackly to you? As this tutorial begins, our submarine is submerged and almost out of battery power. You can see this in the right sidebar right sidebar below the unit fuel heading. The battery text is bolded to tell you that the submarine is running on battery and that we can see that there's only 500 units of battery power left.
Alright, uh, we need to go to Periscope Depth and run the diesel engines to recharge the batteries. Set your depth to Periscope Depth and use speed to creep. Okay, I'm going to pop out of this scene real quick. Mic off. Mic off. Mic on. How do I sound now? Do I sound better? Oh, I'm back. Hi, folks. We need to go to Periscope Depth and run the diesel engines to recharge the batteries, so... Alright. F2. Periscope Depth. Set to creep. Ah, you're going to fall asleep before I'm done. Good. All right, let's close this. So. I'm coming up from 775 feet to periscope depth. All right, now we're at periscope depth. The crew automatically raise the snorkel and switch our submarine over to diesel electric power. It is a common misconception that while snorkeling, the batteries will always charge at the same rate. In fact, the creep speed will charge the batteries faster than the crew setting, and the battery is actually drained at full speed and above in both submarines. That is because at full speed, all power is being directed to the propellers while the batteries are powering the various systems of the submarine. Note that the diesel heading in the unit fuel box is bolded. This indicates that the submarine is now running its diesel engines. Running the diesels is extremely noisy compared to running on battery power. <sighs> so a good sub commander will manage their use of battery power judiciously and only surface or snorkel when they are confident that they are in a safe area. While the battery charges better at creep, we've got a destination to get to. Plot a course to a position inside the reference points to your south and set the speed to cruise. Once you've arrived on station, we will begin the next serial. If you wish, take this opportunity to experiment with various speed depth settings to see their effects on battery power. Aim to be inside the destination area no later than 1130 Zulu. That's an hour and a half. All right. Cruise speed. Cruise between layers. Ah, uh, I could. I need to click on that guy. Yeah, that's right. Thermoclines. Oh, yes, I know about the thermoclines. So, in case you can see in the bottom left corner, down here, where my submarine is, the layer is at. 300 feet to 512 feet, and its strength is a 0.5. So, yay us. Alright, I'm going to change speed to creep because I've got an hour to get there so 1100 I gotta switch back to real time 
Let's cruise. Let's go full. Full speed. TSA functioning. Don't you mean TMA functioning? Going 11 knots. Go to cruise. Take. Toad sonar array. This is a diesel. If he has a toad sonar, I'd be surprised. Let's see. What do we have sensors wise? We have radar, surface search, short range, a radar warning receiver, high frequency quad loop, directional finding, shark gill, hull sonar, uh, mouse roar, hull sonar, active only mine and obstacle avoidance, and acoustic, acoustic intercept MG53. and the Mark One eyeball. All right, we are on station in our patrol zone. Our batteries are still very low. However, in most situations, the submarine commander would avoid allowing the battery being drained below roughly 50%, unless it was mission essential to do so. In Simano, the AI automatically manages your battery for you using the window using the doctrine settings you can use in the doctrine window. Press Control F9 to bring up the doctrine window. Under anti-submarine warfare, we're going to make a change to standard doctrine. Change dive when threat is detected to no. Okay. We're going to general dive when threat is detected. Change to no. This means that the submarine will not automatically dive to shallow depth on detecting a nearby threat. Yes. At this point in time, yes. This is a tutorial. I'm just learning stuff. This means that the submarine will not automatically dive to shallow depth on detecting a nearby threat. In a large scenario when you are controlling multiple units, this doctrine setting is very handy as it allows the submarines to respond intelligently to threats that appear nearby. In this tutorial, we only have one unit to worry about and can direct it to evade ourselves if necessary. Other Useful doctrine settings for submarines include the avoid contact setting, which instructs the AI to move away from known contacts, which can be useful for SSBNs or clandestine operations. Clandestine operations. The recharge battery percentage settings allow you to set at which point a diesel submarine will automatically come to snorkel depth to recharge batteries. And the use AIP setting allows you to control when submarines fitted with air independent propulsion technology that allows diesel submarines to stay submerged for a certain amount of time even after their battery is exhausted start using AIP. Narwhal. Narwhal? There's no narwhals. With our doctrine settings taken care of Let's prepare for the next serial. At this very moment, a friendly maritime patrol aircraft is preparing to take off in order to obtain targeting data for a planned missile strike. First, we need to prepare our weapons. Click the weapons button in the right sidebar. 
weapons on the right side bar. Here we are, weapons. Once it's open, note that the two uppermost torpedo tubes are loaded with UGST torpedoes. Click the reload priority checkbox next to the entry for the SSN 27 Sizzler for each of these two tubes. Okay, reload priority to the Sizzler. We're going to Sizzler, everybody! Yeah! <laughs> This will commence the reloading process, which will take about two minutes to complete. Once you have done that, plot a course within the patrol zone, set depth to periscope depth, and speed to creep in order to recharge batteries while we're awaiting target area. Targeting target data. Sorry. Alright. Is that. Let's resume. Rostov on Dawn. It's a kilo, by the way. It's an er early kilo series. Ship. <laughs> oh, sorry, folks. Oh. So yeah. Oh yeah, I can change my speed. To creep. Right. That's because they're too dumb and they lost the... Um... Lost the wire. Yep, lost another boat. All right, now we have a firm ID in position on the target. You may open fire with your submarine launched missiles. To do so, you can remain at periscope depth, or if you can't wish you can dive to a depth of no more than 160 feet, the maximum firing depth of a Sizzler missile. You can check this in its database entry. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. Press Shift F1 and then click the target merchant To the north, allocate two missiles by double-clicking their entry under the middle suitable weapons column of the platform. Okay, so shift F1. Shift F1. By double clicking in the middle, suitable weapons. <sighs> the Sizzler missile supports waypoints to conduct an off baron attack. To do so, click the SS and entry under allocated weapons. Oh, and then plot course button. You will see a line directly between the fire and the target. Click anywhere on the map and a waypoint will be created for the missile to fly to before flying to target. This will be useful for coordinating overwhelming attacks, using terrain features to delay detection, or simply avoiding the enemy, realizing which direction you are relative to them. Once you've plotted your courses, press escape to return to the weapons allocation window. When complete, close the weapons allocation window to commence fire. If your missiles miss or malfunction, you have another two that you can use to destroy the target. All right, so plot course.
have been launched. The Texas Roadhouse. Oh yeah, it's the Sizzler. What about the Texas Rose House? Roadhouse. Yeah, no Texas Roadhouse for you, man. Bonanza, yeah. Bonanza. Dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun St Stuckies. I don't know if Stuckies, man. Big Chef, yeah, Big and Rich. Isn't that a country group? Transmission. Okay. Incoming transmission. All right. So, Alabama. Leonard Skinner. What else? What else are we going to go with? Yes! Great work. You destroyed the ship with your missiles using targeting data from a friendly aircraft. Resume your patrol at periscope depth and creep speed to recharge your batteries and await further direction. Do that do ba do ba do ba do Uh oh. We have detected walk, don't run. Right. We have detected radar emissions from an MI fourteen PL Haze. Anti-submarine helicopter. For most submarines, the best strategy would be to dive deep and try to clear the launch area. However, we're still very low on battery. Sorry. And the haze has a very long endurance. Chances are we would not escape by doing this. Fortunately, our submarine is one of the very few that has been f that is fitted with surface-to-air missiles. We will wait at periscope depth for the haze to close and then surface and destroy it with Sam's. Right. I said, no hunt for the Red October references. None. None. Once the haze is spotted within nautical, within three nautical miles, bring your submarine to the surface and press shift after one to allocate two to three Sam's against it. You will likely need several shots in order to bring the helicopter down. The Sam's carried by our submarine 
our last ditch self defense weapons rather than dedicated area defense missiles. All right. We'll see how this goes. Let's get the weapons. Oh, the 12 of 12. The computer system goes crying to mama, yeah. That's 15 nautical miles. All right. Once the haze is spotted within three nautical miles, okay. No, I haven't even watched Amazon's Jack Ryan yet. Real time. Shoot, shoot, shift F1, target. Surface the ship. Surface the ship. Surface. He already launched one. He already launched one. Excellent work. There are not many submarine commanders with confirmed aircraft kills. While in this situation, defending ourselves with SAMs was a viable tactic, the vast majority of the world's submarines do not carry SAMs. In the vast majority of situations... Oh yeah, I haven't seen 13 hours either. And the vast majority of situations you find yourself in will not be as simple as this one. That said, if you do have SAMs, you can unexpectedly turn the tables on ASW aircraft that are unusually able to hunt submarine that are usually able to hunt submarines with impunity. Continue on station at periscope depth and creep speed. Prepare for your next hero by loading SSN30 caliber missiles into your torpedo tubes and await further instructions. Alright, weapons! Oh my gosh, where's my calibre? There it is. Scissors aren't off. Calibres should be loading. Change depth to periscope depth. Oh. Looks like I got targets there, and there land target one and two. Fop. Fop, fop, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Down, down. Uh, 
Um, no, I don't watch movies about my war, but I just haven't seen the other ones. Just haven't gotten around to it. Leave MacGyver out of this. Ha! I figured you'd get it. Or more to the point, I knew you would get it. Alright. So let's speed up some time. Now for your final serial. Two land targets are displayed to your west. If you haven't already, load SSN-30 caliber missiles into your torpedo tubes. Once your tubes are loaded, allocate one missile to each target using the same method we used for firing the Sizzler missiles earlier. Submarine launch cruise missiles make submarines an even more potent strategic and tactical tool for a commander. The ability to clandestinely approach an enemy coast and destroy targets on land is extremely valuable. Once the land targets are destroyed, your mission will be complete. If your missiles miss or malfunction, you have one reload available for each target. Alright. Control. Shift F1. Control F1. No, it's... Shift. Control F1. Weapon is reloading. Weapons, calibers are loaded in the tubes. I need to change my course. All right. A fully operational battle station. Control F1. Automatic fire is not a possible target. Is bearing only launch? Why does it say that the weapon is not bearing only launch? Capable. Okay, I don't know why. Weapons. Yeah, caliber is ready to go. Set 
Maybe I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Shift F1. There we go. Allocate one target. I have one set for each. Alrighty. Laters. Let's see if this works. Right. You successfully managed the battery power of a diesel electric submarine while destroying targets on land, sea, and in the air. You are truly becoming a force to be reckoned with. Your final score is 250. I expended one passive all night. Okay. Scoring long. All right. All right. Fair winds and following thieves. Go Army, beat Navy. Oh, wait. Army did beat Navy. Third year in a row. Thank you very much. And hi to the missus. See, that's what I say. I'm all right, so that is done. What's our next? What's our next one we're gonna do? Submarine tutorial 1.4 file start menu. Uh, start a new scenario. Tutorials 1.4. All right, basic operations exam. Diesel submarine attack on surface unit. Six hours game time. Average 30 minutes play time with time compression. Location AGNC. This is the fourth in a series of tutorials designed to teach e teach players the fundamentals of submarine operations and command modern air naval operations. <sighs> On the first exam of the series, in this tutorial, the following topics will be covered: bottom profiling to counter active sonar, shallow whopper, shallow op water operations. The player will need to combine the above concepts with knowledge from previous tutorials in this series in order to successfully complete the mission, specifically diesel electric, electric propulsion, snorkeling, the passive detection methods, collecting intelligence on contacts, the thermocline and la thermal layers, tactics for avoiding approaching surface contacts, engaging surface targets with torpedoes, plotting an intercept, convergence zones, submarine sensor operation, controlling the speed, depth, and heading of a submarine. Load selected. All right, we're going after a Knox class frigate. All right, the shallow water environment differs from deep water in a number of ways. There are no convergence zones. The thermocline may be thinner and weaker or non-existent. <sighs> The ocean floor presents a hard limit to diving depth. Sonar performance is markedly reduced in terms of range and sensitivity. Ocean floor topography affects sonar performance. 
The first three points need little explanation. However, the last two will benefit from some more detail. Compared to deep water, the shallow water environment has a very high level of ambient noise from waves, currents, biological sources, and increased marine life. In fact, in most shallow water environments, a submarine, particularly a diesel electric submarine running on batteries, will be quieter than the surrounding environment. This is exasperated exacerbated exacerbated by the fact that as sound waves reverberate off the surface ocean floor and any other surface the strength of the sound decreases significantly the multiple reverberations and high background noise dr drastically reduces the distance at which contacts can be detected with passive sonar in shallow water this allows submarines to remain undetected at even very short ranges, but also allows for surface vessels to approach submarines undetected. <coughs> Shallow water, water also degrades active sonar performance. Reflections from the seafloor, rocks, wrecks, and other clutter drastically reduce the signal-to-noise ratio, particularly in the low and middle frequencies. Tutorial 1.2, we saw that high-frequency active sonar was not very effective at penetrating the thermocline. However, in shallow water, high-frequency is the active sonar of choice for differentiating submarine from background clutter. Regardless of frequency, all active sonar suffers a significant degradation, degradation of performance in shallow water. Ocean topography is the final point of difference for shallow water operations. In deep water, the ocean floor is beyond the operating depth of submarines, often by orders of magnitude, and is essentially irrelevant when it comes to ASW operations. In shallow water, the valleys and ranges of the ocean floor can be used to avoid detection by both active and passive sonar. Terrain masking using underwater topography is an extremely effective method of avoiding detection as sound is not able to travel in a direct path to passive sonars. <sighs> and no line of sight exists between the submarine and active sensors on the surface. The downside is that the sensor performance of the submarine will also be reduced for the same reasons. Now a friendly intelligence agent has spotted your target, target transition, transitioning the Bosphorus Straits. Plot a course towards your target and start time spacebar to continue. Alright. So, his course is 225 degrees. So, if he stays on course, 225, control D, on him, sorry, 255. And 29 nautical miles, he'll be here. Let's go 25. Shift R. Mouse control R. No. Oh, no, that's the. What's the reference point? Missions and reference points. Oh, control, insert. Alright, so control D. Click on him. Let's go. Control, insert. Insert reference point. Shift R. Shift R. Cancel. Oh, control R. Control R. There we go. Intercept. 
Knox. All right. We're at four knots. Hopefully. Let's go. Oh, sorry. Um, three. I go periscope depth. So I want to and creep. All right. A common tactic that makes use of the shallow water environment is bottom profiling. This is when a submarine avoids detection by sitting motionless on the ocean floor or close to it. For a diesel submarine, the reduction in battery consumption allows for very long submerged endurance, and the lack of noise generated by movement means the submarine is generally much quieter than the surrounding environment. For a nuclear submarine, these benefits don't really apply. Remember, nuclear submarines can remain submerged indefinitely and are inherently noisier even when motionless due to essential reactor reactor systems. Where both diesel and nuclear submarines benefit from bottom profiling is the drastically reduced chance of detection by active sonar. As mentioned previously, both low and medium frequency active sonar are not very effective in shallow water and their chances of differenti differentiating a submarine from ocean floor are very poor. High frequency sonar poses more of a threat but still suffers a drastic reduction in probability of detection. For bottom profiling to be effective, the submarine must be motionless. Any movement will increase the likelihood of detection drastically, particularly against high frequency sound. A good submarine commander will decide on a suitable location all the better if terrain masking is used and get in place well before the target comes within sensor range and the submarine the submarine will then remain motionless and wait for the target to pass overhead before maneuvering into the target's baffles for a higher probability of kill torpedo shot How deep? 210 feet. All right. So I'd really like to go hang out over there. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case. Map periscope depth. So I should be. All right, we're at 
cruise speed periscope down. Sea floor is really close. I need to make sure he's coming towards me and not. Okay. Let's change course. Okay. creep as possible. Okay, so...
Scenario will end once you have sunk the target. And it's safe from counterattack by its carried helicopter. You have six hours. Good luck. We've been launched on. This is not going to go well. I'm going to die. All right. They're reattacking. We broke our guidance wires, it's fine. Oh, I was killed. Disaster, minus 90 points. I screwed up. All right, folks. We're going to call that it for round number two today. Um, with me getting killed. Yay, me! Woo! We'll have to try this one again. Alright, folks. Thanks so much for coming out, and have a